Well, that's why you're on the naughty list because because you're being naughty right now. So you're gonna be on the naughty list if you keep talking like that. No, no, because Father Christmas is not being very nice to me. Because you're being naughty, so you're on the naughty list. No, I'm not. I'm on the good list actually. You're not because you you're not because you ain't being good. I am on the good list. If you keep saying that word again and again and again. I'm not on naughty Father Christmas r rung me last night when I was at work yes. and said, you better tell Jackson to start being a good boy or he's going to stay on the naughty list and he won't get no presents for Christmas. That's what he said to me. So you've got to start being a good boy. Then I'll do an uppercut to him. No, no, he won't do... No, he would, I'm going to punch him. Punch his beard off. You're just silly, man. They trust me. I'm not on bad list. Brunch, hit it, boys! Merry Christmas, Pete. Hey, Merry Christmas, Teej. How is your festive season? It's, uh, I haven't done any Christmas shopping. I have put my tree up and put no decorations on it, but that's, uh, it's good enough for me. I haven't either. It used to be a thing, like, hey, guys, they always wait till the last minute to do their Christmas shopping, and they're always, they're freaking out the day before Christmas or a couple days before Christmas. And then Amazon happened, and it was like, all right, well, that, that, That's won't, acceptable, that won't be a, a worry because you can never be too late because you have Amazon. It can get there tomorrow if you want. And that absolutely still happens, though, that yeah. you don't do any of your shopping until, like, well, what's today? December 12th? Mm -hmm. Haven't even thought about it. Yeah, same. I bought, I bought one present, but it was only because, like, I saw it, and I was like, this would make a good present for so-and-so. Boom, buy that now. Man, off to an early start. I always say that Christmas sh shopping should be like a year-round thing. It's like thinking of your Halloween costume. Yeah. Like, don't just start thinking about it in October. Always keep an eye out. If you see something that reminds you of somebody that, that they might like, go ahead and pick it up. I absolutely don't do that, though. I, I would love to do that, and I say that every year, but like, you just don't think about it unless it's pressing on in your mind, at least not for me. Yeah. Like, I, I see things throughout the year and I think of things throughout the year that I'm like, oh, that'd be a great Halloween costume or it'd be a great Christmas present. But I'm like, oh, I'll get it next week or I'll I'll save it. I'll, I'll remember it. And then I don't remember it. And then whatever the, the holiday comes and I just totally forget. And I'm trying to rack my brain a million miles an hour trying to think of this present or this costume and just nowhere to be found. Here's a uh, brain teaser for you. How would you rate? the current holiday spirit, not just for you, but overall. How would you say we're doing the the world's doing on holiday spirit? It's low. I would say it's quite low. It's low. And I got Did I tell you that I was I saw I I I, I was hate watching a YouTuber. Did I tell you that? <laughs> that sounds like you though. <laughs> I was on YouTube and a YouTuber <laughs> thing popped up on the right. And it was such a ridiculous thing, and it was the most YouTube th YouTuber thing in the world. I was like, all right, I'm going to watch a YouTuber for a was second. Was it Steve Dangle? No. <laughs> it was... No, I watched it. Uh, <laughs> love you, Steve. Um, and I was like, I don't know, like, I don't know what, what made me want... What made me click it, but I was like, I'm going to watch this and just see if it's what I think it's like. And it was... Exactly what It was think. a hate watch. I was not... I, I didn't love it. But I, I thought that I mentioned it on here, but I didn't mention who it was because I didn't want it to sound like I'm saying, like, this hey, person this sucks. person stinks or, uh, like, if you like this person. Not then... to yuck your yum. Exactly. Not trying, to, not trying to hate, trying to have a little holiday spirit year round. Mm -hmm. Again, unless it's Greta Van Fleet, <laughs> don't, don't just, like, make fun of people. Don't or just, Bohemian like, Rhapsody. Or the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, right? Mm -hmm. Greta Van Fleet, Bohemian Rhapsody. Two absolute no-nos. You're allowed to do that, and I'm allowed to do that because I'm a Led Zeppelin fan, and I'm a Queen fan, so <laughs> it's okay. You yep. can absolutely make fun of them. But the idea... Anyway, <laughs> so I saw this YouTuber thing, and I was like, man, not for me. And then I watched like 11 more. And like they, now they keep, they keep popping up on the right, and every now and then... I'll like bang recommended videos. And right now it's like, hey... <laughs> it's like, I know what you like. DJ, now that you're a fan of this YouTuber... Here are their videos. So I started watching them. And then last night, I saw someone screen grabbed the thing on the right that I initially clicked. Mm -hmm. And they did it. They screen grabbed it and then tweeted it 
for the purposes of dragging this person. And all of the I had a lot of retweets and all the comments were just horrible, so mean. And I, I don't know. I'm in this weird spot where I'm like, "That was you once." Hey, no, I'm like, "Hey, I could have been mean." I don't know. I guess I'm patting myself on the back for not saying it's. Uh, do you know who this person is? Uh, Ali something. No, Ali something. She starts all our videos with, "Hey, best pally, I'm Ali." Oh and God, I hate video. it. Whatever, but you're not going to say you hate her, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like I don't know. It's it's like a little lesson in you can dislike things. Don't be super mean about it. And I feel like we we've probably been super mean, and we've for said sure. like we this person sucks, and we don't get personal though. Yeah, I, I don't know. For some reason, it, it 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 upset me very much. Also, because this YouTuber, um, this YouTuber reminds me of myself in some ways, in like not in like bad ways. Like when I watch The Office, I don't think you're supposed to identify. With, do do you ever identify with Michael Scott? Uh, not really. But I like do. his his uh his desire to be liked, I guess maybe. Okay, so like, I identify with Michael Scott a lot, or I did when I would watch The Office. Of like, oh man, this guy, like this, <laughs> I don't know, like in, in like the sort of class clown kind of way, and that like, it's funny, but I don't know, people could just as easily laugh at you as they yeah. could laugh with you. So like, I don't know, like, I I get a little self conscious watching Michael Scott because I'm like. I feel like I've got some of Michael Squat, Michael, Michael Squash, uh, <laughs> crappy qualities. Um, so anyway, like I don't know. This that was just that, that just upset me that everybody uh, is crapping on this person who like I, I've watched enough of her videos. Like she's not doing anything wrong. She's not doing anything mean. I don't think that she's out there hating. So I don't know. Maybe without the actual tweet and without the comments, uh, I'm not painting a, a good enough picture. But it's it just like a reminder that like. The goal is to drag people. The yeah, goal pretty is much. to like and the 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 video was and again, not for me. It was <laughs> what if Truth Hurts was by Mumford and Sons. And everybody oh. was like, Oh, white girl, blah blah. Super mean to to this girl. And I'm like, man, I don't know, I I guess it's well, well, I think like like it's funny because like that girl is is really chasing the clout by doing. I mean, she probably thinks oh yeah that it's yeah cool. like a lot of her videos are like, what if this Billie Eilish song yeah. is by Michael Jackson? She's chasing that clout, yeah, and she's doing it in her own way, which is like you may not like it, you clearly don't really love it, not but for she, me. she's doing I've, it. I've watched she's doing it, videos. and it's working for her apparently. But I, like on the same hand, these people on Twitter that are dragging her, chasing the clout too. They're just chasing those retweet retweets, chasing that engagement. And they're doing it in their own way, and they're being successful. So they're kind of just both like Man. counteracting each other. Total entertainment forever is just blasting <laughs> in my head right now. That is so weird, though. It's true. Like, and they're doing the same thing with like the same end goal. We live in a society. At least where, you can say about fucking Allie that yeah. she's being a nice person trying to do. It. Like she's not harming anybody. Yeah. The, the people on Twitter are just being nasty, and trying folks, to get that close. If there's stuff about Allie we don't know, feel like, free to text. If she's in racist, the, right? Let like, us if, know. like if she's like, I don't know, if she like, I don't know, if she's been like arrested or something or she's like whatever. A tax evader, got a, right? Got a rap sheet. Let us know. I don't know. For me, it just seemed like somebody, a, a very eccentric person with a lot of energy. Just wanted to make a video, yeah. and that's and that's it's cool. Her job, I think, that would be her. I, I checked her Patreon. Oh, is she doing better than us? Clearing twenty six hundo per video. What? Her Patreon thing Damn, is per dude. video. I saw. I was like, wow, man, you could do one dollar. Oh wait, that's one dollar video, and that's the lowest one. Wow, and there there are people that are dishing out like, Damn, yeah, we got to get. We gotta have Ali on and ask her what her secret is. <laughs> Don't even ask her about her YouTube channel. Just yeah. ask her about like, you know, bi- Patreon business. Right. What do we need to do? We have the Christmas song this episode, by the way, and it's uh, what if, what if Andy Williams is the most wonderful time of the year was by uh, Jermaine Dupri. <laughs> oh, hell yes, that uh, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm very very excited. Yes, to hear it. it is. So I'm going to be hearing it with the people. This is a bonding experience for me and the listeners. So this stinks. Uh, as we were talking about how we were going to play this for you the first time, you were like, man, what if we we should have like some like world premiere imaging? And I'm like, the, the this time. world premiere. Yeah. This time. I guess. I don't know. I, I can't spend any more time. I, I, could, any, I could work on something. Not like I don't have the time for it, meaning like I need this, I need this song. 
out of my life <laughs> forever. I wrote it in like a very short amount of time, almost all, all the, this. And this is not like a brag because you're going to hear the song and be like, yo, that sounds like somebody wrote it in two seconds. Mm-hmm. But uh, I wrote. I feel like that's the point, though. Christmas songs aren't supposed to be overthought. No. I feel like uh, it- major chord, major chord, uh, diminished chord, major chord. Easy peasy. Yeah, and also like the Taylor Swift uh, Christmas song that came out last week. Like my first reaction was like, "Oh man, this is so fucking stupid." And yeah. then like the more I thought about it, I was like, "Well, who cares? It's a fucking Christmas song. All Christmas songs are fucking stupid and yeah. they're basic, and that's what you want them to be. You don't need to be like a music critic when it comes to a Christmas song." So I was like, "This song is very basic and very stupid." And then like two days later, I was like, "This song is cool." It would seem to me that the Taylor song. And I got coworkers who are obsessed with Taylor. There's like a little Taylor hive. Mm-hmm. I kind of dip in and out. I'm like an honorary member. They don't really like me in the Taylor hive because they're like, oh, that DJ you got, has you gotta, you, you got to commit or, you, or you're out. Right. Like I think Randy that, is fully in on the Taylor yeah. hive. But I think that, I don't know. I'll have to ask some friends who are in various Taylor hives. I think I got some clout in the Taylor hives because... Uh, Having I Know Places as your favorite Taylor song, I think, is, is kind of respectable. Yeah. I don't know. If, like, if I met somebody who was like, a big Taylor Swift fan, I Know Places is my favorite Taylor Swift song, I'd be like, yo, I bet you understand that All this Too guy Well can, is overrated, This guy can think for right? himself. Yeah. Yeah. And they, we'd probably talk about how All Too Well is... And then I'm yeah, over I, here being like, Cruel Summer, Jam of the Summer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, was, there a, was there much like Song of the Summerisms with Taylor? No. I just remember I was putting. Uh, I moved. I feel like Lil Nas X just really just put a coffin in Song of the Summer. There was Hell no yes. Song of the Summer discussion this year. I love that kid. As I, um, as I become more, I, don't know, I was going to say like Buddhist, whatever the hell I've been getting Zen? into lately, where I'm really trying to be cognizant of like, don't let when shit I'm bother like you. Me, no, like when like when I'm mean or when I say something that could like hurt somebody's feelings, I'm trying to to back off that because. I don't know, like some sometimes somebody can say something to you that's not even that's like run of the mill, mm-hmm. but depending on how you're feeling or depending on whatever, right. you could be like, that sucks. For example, I got really mad at your friend uh Jim a few weeks ago. Oh, right, yeah. Uh got a friend Jim. He uh I think he would tell you he uh he likes to put a microscope to everything. He's a, he's a cynic. He's he's a bit cynical. Yeah. Uh, and I said I love knives out, and he was like you Did said you actually like Knives Out? You said oh, it was no, your favorite, favorite movie, movie of the year. The year so far. And he was like, was it actually your favorite movie? Like, did you really like it more than Parasite? Or are you just saying that because that seems like the you thing to do? And I got like 60 <laughs> angry feelings because that, all along. Because so. like that is, I mean, that's like such a, like a, I don't know, I, I don't want to call it like passive aggressive, but it's such a like a layered insult. Oh, yeah. it, oh it's, it's definitely... Um, it's definitely like condescending. Yeah, for sure. And it's coming from Jim who sees like two movies a year. Right. And so like you can you can like disagree or say that to somebody who if like if you're on the same playing field. Jim's yeah. on the same playing field for movies. Right. He's seen like two movies and he's like, Oh, I'm not gonna see knives out. It's just it's clue. I was like, You haven't seen it, how do you know? Oh yeah. So and I, I legitimately you've seen me, you've seen me in action with Jim. Yeah. Big Jim fan. Jim's great. I love Jim. But I hung I was out like, with him last weekend. I I was like, man, Jim Jim's capable of hurting me. Like that <laughs> that that made me upset. So anyway, like, Jim is not as cranky on the internet or in real life as he not. seems to be on the internet. Definitely not. Yeah. And when I'm around Jim, sometimes I try to even like play up, like, like, like get him going, <laughs> prod him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you can't piss off Jim get in real him, life. No, like to no, like get him to be like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And he's like, oh, whatever. Like to, yeah. to each their own. And but yeah, on, on the internet, he's he's a little real more, cranky, pan, cranky pants. A little, a little more of a, a grumposaurus. Yeah. I I hope that Jim is not insulted by me saying that. Because Jim does, definitely does not listen to this podcast. You're fine. Does Jim do podcasts at all? Do you think? Yes, he does a few. I'm trying to ask where I'm trying. I'm trying to think what would he, he listen to? He definitely doesn't listen to anything on the. Ringer. Well, I could expose him. You well, you say on the record on the ringer. Oh no, probably not. Uh, probably not on the, the, <laughs> on the record. Saying, like, he probably like, doesn't like. To... Yeah, I could expose him for one podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's not do that because we're. Uh, where is this coming from? Oh, um, yeah. I'm trying not to be a hater or anything, but I saw that Taylor Swift put out that Christmas song, and she was like, "I just wrote this song, and I really want to put it out, and it's almost holiday season." Blah blah. And I heard that song, and, and I you're was like, like, "Get your own podcast." <laughs> yeah. No, I heard that song, and I was like, "Yo, you can say whatever you want, Taylor." That was just like 
a little that was just like a progression that you had lying around. Oh tried yeah, tried to work it yeah. into something and couldn't. You you were you weren't in love with whatever you you could make, so you're like, well, let's use it for something. And then you made a Christmas song. That's yeah. what that was. Yeah, and I didn't buy for a second that it was like a a spontaneous like. Well, I I'm not going to wait a year to release it, so let's just put it out now. Yeah. There is nothing that that girl does that is not completely premeditated Focus and groups. yeah yeah and just completely laid out for how it's gonna work right that little cat video and the drop that is that is a product of like i'm not even sure 15 months of <laughs> yeah. meticulous planning yeah. and she's like screaming at her cats being right. like you're getting the take wrong some of the some of those cats are okay i feel like i feel like those cats are uh are like robots really yeah like she she can't have cats that fail the takes so she just gets robotic, robotic cats that will nail the take every time. Are you excited to see cats? Uh, no. Mm, mm, yes, to see what it is. Because it's either going to be spectacular or it's going to be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. And both, the, both of those things sound really appealing. There's no yeah. way it falls in the middle. I will say, to, to quote a friend, uh, ending up liking cats would be a DJ thing to do. Like I could see myself yeah. being like, yeah, definitely. Yo, I'm. I, cause I've it has music. Play. It's ridiculous. About it. it has yeah. Taylor Swift. It has Idris Elba. Uh, oh, like, really? It has Idris Elba? Yeah, dude. Okay. So like I'm you're definitely that. gonna be a cats guy. I don't know. I don't like. Uh, I don't like cats. Actually, I, I don't. I don't dislike cats, but I'm the animal or the, the show? dog guy. Okay. What I said, the animal yeah. or the show? The animal. They. Uh, I don't know. I know that people I, people like that they're judgmental and everything. Yeah, I like that they're uh, they have personalities. And I like, they, like a like, lot of them are assholes. I like they keep to themselves. Yeah, definitely. I like that. You can just leave. Like you can leave a cat for like yeah, couple. So things. I've I've like for a while I was like oh dogs all the way and I fucking love dogs. I love dogs so much. I I think that dogs are the greatest things in the world. But I'm like the older I get and the more wise I get, I'm just learning that you can like a lot of things. And, yes. And <laughs> I was going to say cats. You know what cats and dogs are? Good. Hockey and basketball. You can like both of them. People's brains explode. And like if they if like if you're a big hockey fan and you're like, wait, what do you mean you were at the basketball game? Uh, Only one sport this season, bro. And basketball fans are like, yo, like you can like whatever you want. Cool. So I think I'm like, do- I think I'm going with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> these guys seem yeah. way cooler. Uh, I mean, I think dogs are the best thing in the world, but I also think that cats are, are very great for different reasons. Yeah. So you can have them both. You can like them both. I, I like hanging out with them both. I, I think that uh, cats are probably funnier because, like, they're just the biggest assholes. Yeah. I don't know. Dogs can... Dogs just do it for me. Although, I do you think you'll ever get a dog as an adult? Yes, 100%. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. They're like certain chips have to fall in certain places. For sure, but but I, I would uh I would run myself into a dog in a like a in a bad situation and like I'd I'd find a way to work around it. Like I like a like a situation where like I shouldn't get where a dog right now. Dog? Yeah. yeah. And, like, I've thought about it at, at this place, this apartment that I live at. I'm not allowed oh, to have dogs. I'm like, there's definitely a way that I could sneak a dog in here. Yeah, I could sneak a dog in here. I, I, my current place, I think I could do a dog, but nah. I, I, enough people close to me have dogs, and I, I get right. my, my dog fix. Yeah. Uh, so what? What Shall we do the, uh, shall we do the Christmas song? Yeah, let's, was, uh, so, let's get to it. Yeah, this was for the, uh, the, the Patreon thing where, like, if we hit a certain amount of subscribers, then we will do certain things and we're going to set little goals and carrots and stuff. And this was the first one. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, Making as, it happen. Yeah. As I said, it the song is very simple, took very little time to write most of the... Most of the words were quickly done. Um, Are you uncomfortable right now? I'm like physically uncomfortable. Yeah. I have an itch. Oh, okay. I've been, yeah, I've been like. I didn't know if this was like a. Shoulder. I didn't know if this was like a like I'm an like anxiety inducing like something no, that you're no, not looking. I did catch myself doing the like 
artists do this and it drives me crazy. I'm not saying. Yeah, it I'm, sort of felt like you were like being interviewed about something that that you that you brought like, up yourself. Your creative pro, like your creative thing. So I'm not going to name. I'm not going to name names. A musician that we know does that. They'll post videos after they come up with a song, and they'll start. To, they'll be like. I wrote this song when I was, huh, let me think. I'm like, you're making the video yourself. <laughs> no one just like, like nobody's putting you on the spot. You. Yeah, you're <laughs> on the spot right now. It's so weird. Like, I don't know if you, anyway, the quick little explanation of that is wrote it quickly. It took a while though to do the arrangement and, uh, mix it. So it sounded like anything. I still don't know if, uh, I mixed it well at all. My friend uh, Dave Lefkin from the band Foxtrotter uh, played piano on this, and I I like a lot of things about it, but I don't know. We'll we'll see what uh, what you bozos think. Uh, Pete's gonna listen, and we'll put it in, then we'll talk about it. This is a brunch world premiere. This is a world premiere. It's a world premiere. World, 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 world premiere. What up, Brunch Contribbles? This is your boy Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. And you are listening to a brunch, brunch world, world premiere. It's a world premiere. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a world premiere. Let's go. Merry Christmas, Pete. Hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> what? <laughs> you said that last time. I think it's a good, it's like a seasonal thing. All right. Someone's angry with coffee cups They say they've changed them too soon But all I hear is a choir Singing silver bells to you Forget complaining about decorating We wouldn't do that around here Cause the holidays only come once a year Oh, the holidays only come once a year. Oh, the holidays come once a year. They only come once a year. Certificates of gifts and baskets of fruit The season of sharing for old and the youth That holiday spirit will never get long in the tooth A cinnamon cookie to munch with a friend When that son of a bitch Kringle has done it again It only comes once a year the holidays only come once a year. Oh, the holidays come once a year. They only come once a year. So close the pantry No more snacking You keep me plenty full, my dear Cause the holidays only come Once a year Every episode for the next month or so, just start off with Merry Christmas. Keep it going, maybe even a little past Christmas. Well, that's just fucking amazing. Oh, I am, I'm blown away. It might literally be my favorite favorite holiday song of all time. 
That uh, you not were a listening joke. to it and like laughing and smiling the whole time might be my favorite holiday <laughs> song the whole time. My biggest fear was, uh, and I, the listeners are going to have this reaction, but at least you didn't. My <laughs> biggest fear was I was going to just put it in there. You'd be like. Hmm. Word, cool. Yeah, nice job, buddy. Well, anytime, anytime like, you on. like, anytime you like something and you like play it for somebody, there is like that very awkward. Like, right. what do you think? It's pretty, pretty good, right? Right. Now imagine you don't like it, but you made it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. It's amazing. Um, I uh, the, the fruit got I, me. Really so got me. I finished it yesterday. I focus grouped it a bit. Sent it to a few people. Sent it to. Uh, Jeff, Randy, a couple of uh, music pals, our buddy Wayne, and uh, the only reaction it got was certificates of gifts. Ha ha. Really? <laughs> and like they weren't saying like, yo, this sucks or anything, yeah. but I was like, I don't know. I, I wanted to follow up be like, can I please have more notes? Anything else? Right. <laughs> not, and like Again, like not looking for like, it's great or whatever, but yeah. just like, like, any fee- the only feedback it got was certificates of gifts. And I was like, that's not even going to be the part that Pete likes. It's no. going to be the next line. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, there'll be certificates of gifts and uh, baskets of fruit okay. this season of sharing yeah. for all I was for completely, uh, the whatever happened before fruit, just throw it out the window because that's yeah. the only thing that mattered to me uh, in that song. Also, the uh, you sandbagging son of a bitch with the world premiere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was great. Is you it, you were like, we should have this. I was like, man, if only I'd thought of that and spent. I'm just gonna play that one more time. That's the part that I like the most out of the whole thing, really. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's incredible. I was like, uh, well, I got Jeff obviously because I think yeah. he said my name is Jeff. Yeah. Uh, and then the second one, I didn't realize it was Kellen. Uh, you missed the first one. What's the first one? Randy. Randy. Yeah. Oh wow. DJ. I think it's DJ Randy. DJ DJ. Uh, pitched up and down DJ, <laughs> Jeff, DJ, Jeff, Kellen, uh, Jeff. Let's, you let's couldn't see. have reached out to, to Lena? She's not really doing anything. I thought about it. I did think about it. I was like, man, this is not a well-represented... Do uh, not use a bullet on Lena for, for that. Oh, like a favor? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we got a, a favor that we're going to call in with Lena. She, she knows way too many cool people for us to be yes. like... Can you do a quick voice memo for me, <laughs> man? Uh, this can't be every episode, but every I, every time I, I read something about Lena, it's always like the next the yeah. the next unbelievable. Did thing. Uh, did you tell them not to tell me because nobody spilled the beans? Yes, I did. So okay. let me see. Uh, I had so I sent a, a video to select Patreon subscribers uh, yes. while I was working on it, and that came with a contract. That they don't oh, really? tell anybody, and that if they don't like it, they keep it to themselves <laughs> until everybody else hears it. And then when I sent it to uh, Jeff and Kellen and uh, all those cats, I said, I sent it with, Pete doesn't hear it till tomorrow, so don't text him, this sucks yet. Uh, yeah, then I, this this is my fair part. Hold on. ba 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 Randy. Kellen. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, I, I guess I miss Randy because he's such a good actor that he dis- disguised himself so well that I couldn't tell it was him. It's, you know what? I asked both him and Kellen to just say like in their own voice this is a world premiere and both of them sent back this is a <laughs> world premiere which i think was them being like whatever this is going to be used for i gotta I, distance let myself him let him it. know that i'm not taking this seriously <laughs> or like if it ends up being something stupid people don't know that it was me leave me some pl- plausible deniability kind of like could be like oh this, this is on my speaking voice i don't talk like that <laughs> Uh, either way, fucking knocked it out of the park. I'm, cool. I'm very proud, especially that the, that was our first uh, Patreon like reward. Yeah. So congratulations uh, and thank you to the Patreon people. Um, I thought about 
putting it on like a thing like uh, Spotify or something like that, and a that costs money, but it's but not it's not so prohibitive that uh, we wouldn't do it. But also, it uh, I think it takes like ten to fourteen days, we'll and be, I think the holidays will be uh, gone. Will be once the year right. So we're in the we're in the the Taylor Swift bind, the situation that she faced, where she was going to have to sit on it for a whole year. So. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a way to like send the file to uh, anybody on Patreon. I think you can do. I don't know. I gotta look into Actually, it. Actually, I think like Bandcamp or something. Maybe you can. Just oh yeah. Upload it for free, and then people can download it. And then once you've downloaded a song, like uh, "Gilded Cage" by Father John Misty, isn't on any streaming services. Yes. But I bought it on Amazon, and one of my friends showed me how I could add it to my Spotify. Okay. So if anybody wants it uh, that badly, I am. Thoroughly, we can find a way. As though people will not, but if I mean, you do all the Father John Misty pop songs are not available anywhere. They're just on YouTube, and and it's like I listen to those all yeah. the time. So if we can do it, you can maybe just put it on our YouTube channel or something like that. And if yeah. you want to listen to it, just pop on the YouTube app. May I ask you a personal question? Yes. Uh, are you on a Father John Misty kick? Yes. Yeah, you I can thought... definitely tell by the brunch social media. So that's what's so great. I'm like, I bet they don't even know. There have been a lot of Father John Misty tweets from the uh, brunch social media, yeah. and they have been from Pete, and yeah. that made me think. And one time I walked in, you were listening to Father John Misty, and you know what? A little detective that I am, I'm putting two and two <laughs> together. I'm like, I think somebody's on a Father John Misty kick. And the best is, is that like, I'm on a Father John Misty kick without like recognizing any of his official songs. I was going to say, I don't know. Like, have you been listening to his albums? I'm no. Just, I've been listening to uh, all the, the pop songs, yeah, his pop songs. Uh, Toyota Prius commercial, mm-hmm. his uh, obviously Gilded Cage that never yeah. leaves the rotation, yep. but also uh, just a, a, a really strong Tiny Dancer karaoke kick. I loved the, uh, the tweet from the brunch account. Every mall in December. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas, Satan. Satan. Um, I actually, speaking of Father John Misty, or Josh Tillman, non-Father John Misty projects, while making the holiday song, I was listening to a lot of the Christmas classics to just see how uh, those kind of crooner songs were mixed and... Uh, I was listening to like the Frank Sinatra ones, but the sound I was trying to emulate there, probably done very poorly, was uh, It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Andy Williams. Because I, I think we, we've discussed this. He just sounds so drunk in that song. He's like, the, it's the most wonderful time of the... And he just, like, yeah, his voice just sounds it, lubed. Yeah, it sounds like it's like he just got on a piano at like... 12 30 at night at a bar he's had a couple yeah yeah right he's had a few so uh then i just went down an andy williams rabbit hole non-christmas songs and uh his song i can't get used to losing you is the song that is sampled uh on hold up and that made me do a hold up deep dive because as we do our best albums of the year and best songs and well, whatever is of that. 2010s yeah, I've started to do it, and I'm like, I don't know, it's it's tough. But uh, lemonade and hold up, right? It's it's just there's just gonna be more next week anyway. <laughs> uh, lemonade and hold up are like two of my favorite things from this last year. Hold up in particular, probably if if there were like a top ten or top five songs from the last ten years, I would say hold up is definitely in there and. Uh, it made me just do like a deep dive on that song because it still blows my mind that that song was Diplo had that sample, the doom, da, boom, da, doom, da, doom, and he had Ezra Koenig from Vampire Weekend in to potentially do a major laser song. And Ezra had tweeted uh, something paraphrasing Maps. You know the song uh, Maps by the AAS? Way. They don't love you like I love you. You know that song. Maybe. Anyway, he tweeted, instead of, wait, they don't love you like I love you, hold up, they don't love you like I love you. So uh, Diplo told him to come up with a hook, and he just started singing those lyrics, and he came up with that chorus. 
And then Beyonce was like, yo, this is dope. And she'd been listening to some of the Mist Man. And she was like, yo, let's send this to Father John Misty, see if he can't come up with a verse. And Father John Misty came up with the verse and the pre-chorus. And I forget who else had a hand in it, but like that song touched so yeah, many like, different yeah. hands before it got to Beyonce. And it's it was like, like a Thanksgiving the, dinner of gods, and they just keep like passing the plate. Totally. And then it ends up uh, in Beyonce's lap. And I have so many questions. Like, there hasn't, again, like, I, I'm saying this from having just done like a deep dive. Like, I want to do like a documentary on that song. It's, and it, like, get, you know, like, you should do. About what they did and how they came up with it. You know, what you should do uh, an oral history. People fucking love oral histories. Yeah, but do they read them? People love making them. I don't know if people actually read them. Yeah, I think people, I think people read them. I think, think people so? fucking love oral histories because, like, anytime there's a good oral history on something that people like, it's just like all, it, it dominates Twitter for that entire day. Yeah, it's but just it's, like, it's tough because I don't know whether to take someone's word for it when they're like, "You got to read this oral history." I'm that's like, "True," and this is bad. So someone in our line of work that I'm like, "Did you? Do read I really? <laughs> do I really have to? Is this a good oral history? Is um, it going to change my life?" Yeah. So anyway, that's uh. It's it's wild because when that song first came out, it was definitely while this podcast was happening. I was obsessed with that song, and I would I don't know if I was a big Father John Misty fan yet, but I remember eventually I saw like, oh, Josh Tillman was one of the songwriters. That's that's pretty neat. And now that I go back and like read up on it's it, all you care about, <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Like now that I go back and read up on it, I think it's super cool that Beyonce was like, yo. This is, well, like, it's very cool know, that, that like, was probably around like Honey Bear or something. Yeah. So like Beyonce's listening to "I Love You, Honey Bear." That's and insane. It's like, hey, I want Josh Tillman yeah. to be in on Beyonce music. I mean, it, one, it's insane that Beyonce listens to fa- to Father John Mystery, and two, it's just it's like it's very cool when like these very huge superstars are like don't have such a big ego totally that they're like let's send it to somebody else that's amazing right and see if they can do something it's so fucking weird like even like these uh i just always imagine like anybody who is at that level to be like very controlling very like this yeah. is mine I, i'm i'm doing it the way that i want to do it right i don't know it's like i'm not even a fucking musician but like anything i come up with anything that i come up with that's like creative i'm always like very protective Wait, over it this if i started this then i should be the one that finishes it and i should be the only one that does it or if i give it to somebody like what if they do it better than i do it or whatever yeah so it's wild that like beyonce who maybe it's just because she is beyonce and she's like well no one's gonna think father john misty's <laughs> better than me so yeah sure yeah diplo do whatever you yeah ezra cool like no matter what happens yeah I can like, like, like I'm a, still the fucking star here. Imagine that being able to like stare down Vampire Weekend and be like, "You can't fucking touch me. <laughs> you can't put a dent in me." Yeah, sure. Write my song. Yeah. Shout out true. Beyonce. Did you ever watch her uh, Netflix thing, no. Homecoming? No. I have no idea how I didn't watch that. I still haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched anything on Netflix really, other than Shit's Creek. Oh, you're doing that? Yeah. Very good. How about uh, How about Marriage Story? Oh, I did watch Marriage Story. Yeah. Wow, great transition. That's a good little transition. Uh, this episode, by the way, brought to you by nobody. Uh, Marriage Story. Yes. Hell Marriage of a Story. movie. Marriage Story. Fucking unbelievable movie. I uh, thought the first five minutes, or like first like 10 to 15 minutes, I was like, buckle up, Deej. This is your favorite movie you've ever seen. Really? And it didn't end up being my favorite no. movie I've ever seen, but I thought it was great, and I thought that performances all around awesome i mean that's the Laura one Dern, that's God the one damn. takeaway i mean even ray liotta yes in a supporting role was like, ray liotta scene was knocked it out of the park courtroom scene between laura dern and ray liotta while driver and scar joe are just serving looks and reacting incredible this movie also by the way was uh, out of focus porn oh right yeah 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 i mean Where, the, the movie was shot great totally. it's just a very good aesthetic um I mean, obviously, the the biggest takeaway is that every performance in this movie was like really, unbelievable, really good, yeah. like career best for almost everybody involved. Yeah, someone asked me after they were like, uh, they hadn't seen it yet, and uh, they were like, "How was everybody?" And I was like, "Everybody's really good." I was like, "Scarlett Johansson, I thought was great," and then we got into a conversation of like, "Do we think Scarlett Johansson's a particularly great? Like, have I ever really thought about if Scarlett Johansson's?" 
great. Never really knocked my socks off, but she never really right. takes away from the enjoyment ever. Right. Uh, the only the only uh, thing I could contribute to that was that I didn't love Lost in Translation as much as everybody else. But I feel like that's almost become a thing. That's become like a, a group that, oh, I think Lost in... Like, I, people do call Lost in Translation overrated now. But, like, I don't okay. think she was bad in that movie. I just thought that movie wasn't that amazing. Okay. But she, uh, she was great in The Jungle Book. Remember? She was a snake. Yeah, she was uh, very, uh, very sexy. Right. Or sexy, s- phallic... Sensual. Yeah, snake. She was the, the horniest snake. Yes. And... Adam Driver plays the horniest snake in this. What? Movie. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was going to say, what? Well, he cheats on her. He, he uh, wants, and he doesn't consider it cheating. That, that so is he, tough. totally off the books. That is, that, that's pretty rough. <laughs> well, if you think about it. You I weren't having sex it, with me. I don't consider I wasn't it cheating, cheating. <laughs> therefore it's not. Like, so th- when he said that, I, it was like his reason, he's like, well, you stopped having sex with me. I didn't cheat on you. All right. Like, sure, man. Uh, like, and she didn't really like. She didn't really counterpunch there. She was right. like, okay, <laughs> yeah. The I don't know. I've not been uh, in that situation. I guess of we're in the middle of a divorce and like you did whatever. Yeah, but, but that wasn't like in the middle of a divorce. That was just like she had stopped having sex with him, like while they were together. Oh no, no, no! I'm saying like how they navigated that. Oh that, yeah, uh, that yeah, big yeah. argument. But um, yeah, man, the uh, th- this movie moved me to tears. I think twice. Oh wow! Uh, I don't think that I cried at all, but like I, I was did. just very captivated. My friends and I discussed that after. There's a difference. There's tears and there's crying. Like well up. Right, like, te- like you get tears in your eyes, and they don't uh, necessarily have to fall. And I think, right, and I think I got tears in my eyes during the fight scene, and then I cried at the end of the movie. Okay, I don't think that either one happened to me, and I was just sort of like captivated by the movie the whole time, and yeah. like it, it, it didn't necessarily like move me to to like cry or well up, but I was just like, wow, this is very sad, but also very fascinating. I think that this movie did a good job of. Uh, of honestly capturing the phenomenon, this is going to be controversial. This is going to be a bad take, whatever. I'm not trying to for it to be a bad, uh, unproductive thing. But uh, the way they captured what we call gaslighting, I think was very real. And the more I think about it, I think that a lot of cases of gaslighting... like I, I did not think that Adam Driver was like a bad guy and that he even intentionally was gaslighting her Mm -hmm. he for sure was gaslighting her but i think that was just like the dynamic of their relationship and the longer people two people know each other the i don't know like a a a dynamic between them becomes formed yeah and like their dynamic happened to be that he would he would always have an answer for everything and i don't think that he intentionally was like ah well I'm gonna f- I'm gonna trick her into th- seeing things my way. No, I think that like if you're if you are a manipulative person or like have manipulative right, like, tendencies, if you, have it, you, if you can manipulate somebody, yeah, yeah, and like you're not necessarily always uh, like consciously uh-huh, thinking that you're going to manipulate somebody, but it's just like the way that your brain operates at some point, and then like maybe later you take a step back and realize it. Yeah, but I, yeah, like I and do how, think like, that he was sort of that way and i think that he was so selfish that uh he he didn't even really and she says it at a point in the movie like you're so selfish that you don't realize how selfish you are yeah he uh, but but it was weird like i i don't know like i i felt for him in some ways i mean i I felt for both of them both of them were yeah that's the thing both of them were not good to one another and i guess that's the story of a of a and a dead relationship. But. So like what I like so much about this movie is what I like so much about 500 days of summer where it doesn't necessarily paint like one character as guy. like the, m- guy. yeah, right. Like, and especially coming from uh no bomb back who like, this is basically like his true story of his, his divorce with his, oh, his really? wife. Yeah. And like the fact that he was able to write that movie and write the dialogue and have it like sort of shaped the way that it was without painting somebody as like, 
a, a villain right. or whatever. I think that's really cool. And I, honestly, like, I think that if there's anybody that d- is painted in a worse light in this movie, it's Adam Driver, who but, is yeah. Noah Baumbach. And so, like, that, I think, is very admirable. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we could do... I think you did a scorecard of... Yeah. Uh, I've heard it is summer. This would be a good movie for it too. You could do it with this movie, but I, I, I wouldn't want to. Right, right. I, like so, like the thing, the why I did it was for Five Hundred Days Summer was to because, prove the, to because everybody, like anybody with a basic mind, is like, oh, summer's a bitch. Right. And it's like right. no. <laughs> it's like the movie is told through Tom's point of view. So like she seems like a bad person for, at some points in the movie, but it's also because it's being told by by uh by tom and and like this one is definitely a more neutral perspective yeah do they do they they don't say that word in the movie do they does one of bitch? them bitch yeah in 500 days yeah. summer does one of them uh i don't know but like i i've definitely seen takeaways where like oh summer's a bitch yeah that's yeah. i bet i bet they do say it at least one point oh they definitely say Would, it uh, because it's from tom's we, perspective and i definitely think that he calls her a bit or oh no, or, no, uh, no the friend opening credits no opening credits say uh this is like not dedicated to whomever or whatever and no. then it says b word isn't it oh really yeah. okay okay yeah wild um anyway this this was a great great but also difficult movie you know who's the most underrated person in the movie the uh the first lawyer no, he's good though. The first lawyer is very What's fucking he funny. He's in a bunch of shit. Yeah, but I have I think no he, idea. He might be like a famous. Actor. He's like a that guy. Is he Alan That's Alda? That's not Alan Alda, is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I was gonna say it's probably Alan Alda. Damn, he was. Uh, he was in Thirty Rock. What else was he in? Alan? Mash. Oh, I think that was his big thing. He was also in. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it, it's it's whatever. Um, he's 83. Shouts out Alan Alda. He was very funny in this. The scene, scene where he's telling the joke to Adam Driver. Yes, is great. Yes. The scene. I'm sorry, am I the, paying for this? Joke? I think. I think my my biggest laugh was, uh, well, I, if I was representing you, and he's like, you are representing me. And he, right, 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 right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, shit. Was like, oh no, most underrated person in the movie, the woman who observes. Oh my god! Adam Driver with the kid, unbelievable. She was so good that, like, she's my favorite actress. I think <laughs> she is incredible to be able to like so keep monotone that, yeah. and so uncomfortable. It was in that, an already super uncomfortable situation. Right. Like you, you, that came after the fight scene. And right. If you're like, oh, if this movie's gonna get even more uncomfortable, you wouldn't believe it after that scene. <laughs> Enter. The greatest actor of our time. She was amazing. The The knife scene is fucking unbelievable. That was... Were you concerned as you were watching that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Is this... I was, the movie's been going on for like an hour and a half. This could be it. <laughs> <laughs> I was very concerned uh, about the carpet during that scene uh, because he was like holding his arm down. I was like, oh, there's blood gushing down his arm and it's going to be all over the carpet. There's no way he's going to be able to get that out. I, I, well, no. Remember? He said he was returning it too. The carpet? Yeah. He was oh, putting out stuff for the lady when she came, and the kid was all excited, and he was like, well, we're, we're, gonna, we're taking a lot of this stuff back. <laughs> God. It gave me such bad anxiety. Like, that's all I could. It felt bad that I was like, I was that's what I was thinking was about. Out. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was like, my this take. This guy's dying, and I'm like, oh, my God, protect the carpet. I, uh, oh, my God. That scene was too, too much. But the scene at the end wrecked me. Yeah, I mean it's it's it, I mean that that was not predictable but like that's kind of the only way that it could end right. I suppose. And yeah, it was tough, but like at the end of the day, I think it's sort of again, not to go back to 500 days of summer, but like I th- I think it's a happy ending. Yeah. For for all all parties involved. Uh funny scene when she hooks up with the the lighting the douche guy. Bag. Yeah. yeah. With the clown, but she's just like feeling that like she's taking control of her life. Yeah. And she dictates exactly what's gonna yep. happen. She's like, This is what This is what you do. get, take it or leave You're it. You're going to do this, and that is it. That's all I'm doing. And he's like, Okay. And she then she says something, she's like, like I'm in control or something. 
<laughs> it's fucking awesome. She was really, really good in it. But they were both so... They were both uh, unbelievable. I think right now, if I had to pick, uh, I think Adam Driver, best actor for me. Yeah. Uh, like, he was he was unbelievable. Yeah, I guess it's time to think about... Because I, I, I see these movies and I think, like, best picture or no, and that's it. Yeah. But, yeah, like, got to think about the... The old best actor, actress, best supporting. I mean, Adam Driver. I, I it's. I would for I'd be uh, and, I'd be okay with uh, Laura Dern getting best, best supporting. supporting. Yeah. She was great. Um, but like for me, Adam Driver is like the perfect uh sort of like candidate for best actor in this movie because like one it has the scenes mm-hmm. like there's always those those like certain scenes yeah. that stick with you and those are always the ones that they play at the Oscars and then like when they go through the candidates at the Oscars you're like ah oh, fuck I think that guy might win it because of that scene yeah and so uh, this movie for sure has it and I also think that like as with almost any bombback movie where like it's so character driven and so like performance driven that that like he had the toughest job maybe of anybody in the category yeah this year so uh that that's probably my pick you know what the thing about bombback is that whenever i see that name or hear that name it just sounds like someone uh smushed benedict cumberbatch together (laughs) and all the extra letters just like flew up and got squeezed out and then bomb back is the name that's so that's my a... take on that's my take on <laughs> best director <laughs> yeah that's my take on bomb back uh for like I, i'm not like the biggest bomb back fan just because i had to ask you i was like what does i was like i see that guy's name yeah. what did he do again and he did the uh was it while we're young he did uh either it's when we're young or while we're young when you were young yes by the killers by the killers <laughs> uh he did that one he did that had a Oak graphic ja. uh oral sex scene did it when you were young? No, it didn't. Did it? No. This was a this is a Brandon Flowers. Joke. Oh, you motherfucker! Okay, I was like, I saw that movie and I don't re- recall that. But uh, yeah, he did. Joke being devotees, he does mm, Brandon mm, Flowers. Mm, you know, know what? His own. You know mm. what? Because he seems like he's a fan of himself. Yeah, while, that's not insulting him, by the way. That's while just, we're young, uh, and he did the Myrowit stories. He did the Squid and the Whale. Uh, Francis Ha. I didn't see that one. Uh, Kicking and screaming. The life. Wait, Aquatic. kicking and screaming? Yeah, not the uh, not the soccer one. No, the one with um, shoot, who's in it? I don't know anybody who's in it. I think Perry no, Reeves de- is in you it. Definitely for a second. do. Uh, bum, 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 bum. That's a good movie. Yeah, so it's he a, did that kids one. Kids that just graduated college. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. a good movie. He did that one. Uh, he did The Life Aquatic. He did uh, The Fantastic Mr. Fox, which doesn't <laughs> seem to fit in. Um, but yeah, like, is, uh, so for, like, I thought While We're Young was okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the Meyer West stories drove me crazy just because I couldn't stand how neurotic uh, the, the characters were. And Might so, as well like, you and Harry Met Sally, am I right? But, like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, Noah Baumbach is. Uh, like an it director at this point, so uh. Uh, I think I finally get it. Like this one kind of blew me away. I would say this is my favorite of his that I've seen. Although yeah, I definitely think not I've close. only seen uh, three. Hey, so that's a. Would you say this movie's top ten for the year? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely. Too. I would say it's in the it's pr- five to ten range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think it. I think it might be closer to like five, yeah. six, seven there. So yeah, you know what I can't wait to do what. Uh, whenever a new movie enters the top ten, I get rid of the movie that I had nine because you are so not can, getting rid of. So I can keep Cold yeah. Pursuit as a uh, as an icebreaker. What was nine as a, before? It's a conversation piece. Let's see. Uh, oh, I may have updated it. Shoot, let me see. You make it feel like Christmas. Um, nine was the lighthouse. See ya, the lighthouse. <laughs> There's uh, a new marriage story in town. Yeah, I think you're gonna put it at nine. Uh, and then no, rearrange no, I'll after figure that. it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, like this movie. Once upon a time in Hollywood might get pushed down. Yeah, I mean, like these these movies, like the later movies that have that have come out and like we've snuck into the top ten. Yeah, could be recency bias, but I feel like they have more of a, a, no, a, but, a staying power. But even when seeing some of those movies, when seeing some of the earlier ones. I didn't think like, oh, I hope this is like my in my top five. You know, like I didn't think that they were uh, elite, elite, elite. Whereas these ones, I'm like, 
Like I, I think that that uh, Marriage Story was really really good. Yeah, and and I think that's it's gonna like hold more more staying power, and it's it's a. Uh, I'm definitely interested in rewatching it too, which is yeah. weird because it is such a tough movie. I don't know. Like, there's something about this movie that is very difficult, but also like very endearing and very, um, yeah. like you like all the characters and you're sort of rooting for all the characters, even as they're going up against each other, which is extremely, extremely like a weird experience. Yeah. But it is also like that's sort of what divorce is. Right. You, like, they have to be so ugly. Like the stuff yeah. of, and I, I know this does happen. Um, you go and see, you meet with every oh, uh, yeah. attorney, to, yeah, so that you to, that they can't to like represent you, yeah, yeah. That so shitty, like right, <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, but like, that's what her lawyer told her to do, right? So yeah, it's it's, the game. it is like a very very interesting sort of like um, study of divorce, and I think that it's pretty accurately represented in my mom. Uh, we watched it and she was like, this is a really good movie. It hits extremely close to home because my parents are divorced. She's like, it, it hits extremely close to home and it gets a lot of things right about divorce. And I was uh, like, that is, that like, has got to be the worst. This that is, is brutal to watch. Yeah. <laughs> like, that has got to be the worst. And like, it is very interesting where it's a story that starts off at like a very amicable place because a lot yeah, of divorces they're, they're not do not and, yeah, and yeah a lot of divorces do not start off at that place so to see one that starts off at like a pretty amicable place and then devolves into what it devolves to right. is like very painful yeah. to watch it will it, but it was also amicable because they both assumed that they were going to get what they wanted so yeah. they're like we don't need lawyers because i'm going to get what i want right and then i think that it probably took ScarJo meeting with a lawyer to realize, like, oh, wait, this guy's always kind of been manipulative, and he's just probably going to take everything that I can. That was, man, I, I re- like I said, you feel for both of these characters at points during this movie, but, man, all that flying around and having to get in and, like, not having any money and trying to run around to keep up with stuff just to be able to see your kid for two seconds. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. The that money thing blows. really like the like it gave me anxiety. I was constantly thinking of like, <laughs> yeah. how is how he affording this yeah, rental car? How much car? is this costing? Right. Yeah. Like, how is he staying at this hotel? He's staying at a hotel. Why yeah. doesn't he just stay with her? Oh, because they're getting divorced. Right. <laughs> like, the trick or treat. The, that was tough when he went there and he was oh, planning man. on staying yeah. at the mom's house. Yeah. And uh, she was like, "So are you staying?" It's like, oh, awful. Um, and also just like the fact that he came into like five hundred thousand dollars and then like. See ya. Get any of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And most people getting divorced don't just come, come into five hundred thousand dollars. So man. Yeah, wow, and uh, great movie though. Tremendous movie. Like I Good I recommendation. And it's on Netflix. You got no excuse. Like, yeah, we'll watch that not. movie. Yeah. Um yeah, big fan. Um what else? Oh, uh Silicon Valley ended. Yeah, it did. Uh and if you if you didn't realize that it don't feel bad about right, it because you're not neither alone. did i yeah <laughs> i was watch I, last night i was like i'm gonna watch an episode of something before i go to sleep i think silicon valley is over and i checked and i was like yeah i have two episodes on my thing i'm gonna knock so these you, out you had been like largely keeping up with it i, I think i've done like i think i did like two every two weeks okay yeah i uh i knew that it ended last week and I didn't. I knew that it was a shorter season. I think it was about seven episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew that I had only watched like the first two. So honestly, if you hadn't watched it, I would have been totally cool. Just I don't care. Visiting I don't it, need to. Right. I don't need to, to see the end of it. Yeah, or even like not even seeing yeah, the end. Yeah, it stunk. Ended. It wasn't yeah. a good season. Um, the but, season was bad, but I did really like the way that it was finished. Good finale. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know I if think I'm usually, really liked, I think like, I'm usually satisfied with finales. I'm not a finale hater. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of there is. Oh, didn't know it's I, it's my favorite show and it ended. So I'm based. I'm going in angry because it's <laughs> over and it didn't do everything I wanted it to do. Primarily, it didn't continue to be a show. The finale sucked. As long as it doesn't anger me at the end, or right. as long as it's not complete fan service to the point where it's like oh god right and i thought there was a very happy medium in the in the uh silicon valley even like the the final two episodes two or three where it's like it 
provided a bit of fan service, especially in the in the finale where like they sort of went through and had some nods back to the things that uh, yeah. that they had done throughout the stretch, um, and sort of encapsulated the entire run. But also like in the final couple episodes, it really got back to what made the show good in the first place, right? Which was like the central group of characters that we uh, that they had first introduced at the beginning, and also being really smart about making fun of the the tech industry in ways that were like preposterous but also really not that far right. from what actually exists they uh they they had their one last oh no we're gonna fuck everything up and we've gotta frantically try to fix this and here goes nothing we'll see if it works and that happens so many times in the show that the first like i don't know six to ten were amazing, and then occurrences and, and made, eleven through six hundred yeah. were unbearable. Well, but like it, their last big one yeah. was, I think, perfectly centered. That yeah. like this is this would be the fuck up that they're chasing down. Uh, as it makes the a Pied lot of Piper sense. Thing concludes. It makes a lot of sense in the uh, in the grand scheme of the entire show and what it's about. Like yeah. the the final sort of. Like, ties in a lot of the things that they keep saying throughout this series. Right, yeah. And it's it's not totally meaningless, which I think I felt like a lot of the hurdles in the in like the the tail end of the show were just like who the fuck cares? You're going to find a solution. Right. It's, it's just just get it over with and let's move on to the next thing and get closer to the end. If they um, cut off these la- if they cut off like two seasons and had this same finale, then been great. it would have been and I guess that's what I want to hit with you is like where does silicon valley sit for you because the first few seasons were all time yeah and it just lasted so long and they i don't know i'm trying to think of like who's a band that put out like a couple of awesome albums and then put out like 16 shitty albums and you're like i guess i have to say that band's not that good even though they did amazing things weezer Weezer's a that's perfect actually. <laughs> Weezer is perfect because even when Weezer was doing lame shit, it still wasn't that bad. Yeah. So like you're still gonna check it out. Like it didn't make you write them off. Right. It was just like ah, this isn't as good as it used to be. Right. Yeah. The Weezer's a good man. You got that in one second. <laughs> uh, Weezer's a uh, Weezer's a very good comparison there. But I mean, it doesn't change that the first yeah, well, but three I mean, seasons it, as always. Like if it gets bad towards the end. Um, and like I don't think that Silicon Valley had enough of a like a, a prolonged stretch where it was great. Yeah, to to like be able to say, well, well, I just disregard those final few seasons because like it was almost bad for as long as it was good. I would agree with that. Which Probably is, even how many seasons was it? Like five, I think five or six. Okay, and if three were good, but here's what I would give Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley had a great first season. Yeah. How many shows can you say that about? Very few. Very few. Especially with like a, a like a comedy of its of its like. Like right. it knew it knew exactly what it was from the second that it started. That is unheard of. We yeah. always go to we always use Parks and Rec as the example of like it's an all time show, and you watch that first episode. And it had no clue. It nope. just knew it had good people. It was just trying to find its footing. Right. It spent it an like, entire season trying to find its footing. And it it got there, and people stuck with it because they were like, it's got Amy Poehler, it's got Rashida Jones, the rest of these people seem nice. Yeah. And the yeah. rest of these people ended up being Aubrey Plaza and Aziz Ansari yeah. and Retta and all these like people who would go on to have amazing careers. And you can say about Silicon Valley, too, is like they, they their cast... How did I skip what's his face there, by the way? Who? I just said Chris Pratt. everybody but Chris Pratt. Yeah. I mean, like, they, they, I feel like Parks and Rec, uh, like, made the, those people into stars. I mean, you could, I guess you could say that about, about Silicon Valley, but Silicon Valley, like, had its fucking cast, its center cast, and it never deviated from that. Right. I mean, TJ, people, uh, people knew TJ Miller right. when it came he out. He was probably the biggest news. one. Or Martin yeah. Starr. Yeah, it was very close between those three. Zach Woods, Martin Starr, and TJ Miller. But Zach Woods wasn't beloved, which is so funny. It's so funny to me that there was ever a time that I, Zach Woods co- would come on a screen and people wouldn't be like, yes, this guy rules. And now when I go back and he, watch... Was like, he in season one? 
Or did yeah. he come in? Okay. He okay. leaves. Uh, he quits Hooli yeah. right off the bat okay. to uh, to join them. Um, but yeah, like when I go back and watch The Office now, I'm so much more jazzed about Gabe scenes than I was initially. But I think that it was just because Gabe was a new character, right? And it, he joined when the series. Anytime you have like a off. anytime you have a beloved cast and like they bring in somebody new, you're sort of skeptical, right? Because like you don't want that to mess up the dynamic that you have. With the show that you already like. Did you like Andy Bernard at first? Uh, yeah, I thought Andy was fine. I absolutely did. Really? I was totally yeah. on board. I was like, I like this whole Stanford situation. Yeah. Like Rashida Jones. Like uh, like the Call of Duty scenes with Andy and oh, yeah. Rashida. Fucking great. Just threatening. I don't know if that would fly. <laughs> Just threatening to kill. A lot him. of shit would fly in the office universe. Um, I think Steve Carell has acknowledged that, by the way. Oh, yeah. He's like, I don't want to like reprise any Michael Scott stuff. Like... He was a bad guy, and back then you could be a bad guy. You could have like could a, get away a tone deaf guy yeah. and kind of get away with it. I don't want to. I don't want to say those those lines anymore. Um, but yeah, like the, uh, the I mean, like the Silicon Valley thing. I thought it was uh, the the finish was was strong, but I I don't think that it's enough to wash the taste out of my mouth of the final few seasons, right. especially like. Maybe if the entire season had been really good, mm-hmm. I could have could have gotten to that place. But like for the majority of like of the last season, it wasn't very good. I didn't give a fucking right. shit about uh, like AT and T stuff. The, and all I mean, that. like the AT and T stuff was interesting just because it was like an actual real life sort of connection, and it, it at least seemed like that was the last thing. Yeah. That was the last thing they were working on. So I was like, all right, I'll turn my brain on for a I second. I didn't give a shit about the uh, the girl that Zach Woods... Gwart. He Gwart's, like, she did absolutely nothing for me. Question. Problematic. Gwart has no lines. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So we, yeah, we, we have to ask the question. Like, Why? Yeah. Is it because Silicon Valley is If sexist? you're listening to this conversation, you don't watch. So oh, I think Silicon Valley, the show, has been called sexist and... I don't know. I don't know any of these people. I'm inclined to think it like, should be. Yeah, but yeah. it sh- it should be sexist, um, rid- right? Like if if they're depicting like, Silicon like, Valley, yeah, it, Silicon it, Valley, yeah. Like if you're depicting the tech industry, your show has to be sexist, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like I'm inclined if if they're like, hey, why aren't there any women on the show? You're like, yeah, there should be. Sure. But as no, to your point, they're they're portraying a very very male heavy yes. field yes which um, yeah I, I guess like that that show like people don't no one's trying to watch that now <laughs> like if they if that show were to start right now people would be like we're not grandfathering this we don't want to watch this <laughs> uh but yeah i did not care about gwart at all um I, I thought that that jared the last season was good his lines were funny and especially the way uh he talks about the other uh Richard's assistant, yes, the guy oh, that he, he basically yeah. squeezes. He, 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 oh, he's a bitch, <laughs> right? Like he's like <laughs> he. Uh, really there was, there was a lot of heavy-hitting. there was a lot of Jared turning it on and off. Yeah. in the final season, which is always enjoyable. Um, and uh, like I said, I think the last time that we talked about it, like the scene where he is kicking through the bottom of the door, trying to get at uh, at uh, Richard, right? At Richard, what, what is yeah. Rich, does he insult Guard? Or yes, something? Yeah. yeah, and he's trying to get at him. I thought that was very funny. Um, I, I I will say it till the end of time. Like, uh, what's his name? Gavin Belson should have been off that show like two, three years oh, yeah. ago. He just overstayed his welcome like crazy. He was yeah. such a good character in the beginning, and he just became such a caricature of what he initially was. But they were getting they. I think they were like, we can't afford this much turnover. They were probably scared. They were like, we can't. Yeah, have well, this they many did, That's the thing. They just leave. didn't take risks. Yeah, like they just kept they kept You're doing the kidding. same thing over and over and over and again. TJ Miller totally called it yeah said it in real time yeah. he's like this he the really did it. i can't yeah. do this yeah and he, he he left at a time where i was like what a fucking idiot this show oh, is so good yes. and like what is tj miller gonna do and like he hasn't done anything good sure hasn't. but you know what he wasn't on silicon valley when it was bad yeah but i wonder would it, it would have still been good if he was on it maybe i don't it would have diminished don't, yeah it probably would have like the like, joke would have gotten old i guess but like all know. their jokes got old, so they probably to say that T.J. Miller would have saved it single handedly. I don't think so. Yeah, um, 
It turns out Richard Jewell doesn't come out in Boston tomorrow. That's not true. I'm going to see it tomorrow. Not Richard Jewell. Uncut, Uncut Gems. Gems, uh, ge- gems and Jewels. Yeah. Um, Uncut Gems. Yeah, it doesn't come out in Boston tomorrow. I remember I had this whole big day planned. I was going to yeah. go see every movie. Now I think I'm... So I was going to see Uncut Gems, Richard Jewell, and uh, Black Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I was like, probably not going to see Black Christmas. Save that for sometime next week. Uh, Uncut Gems, not in Boston. Richard Insane. Jewell... Hella problematic. Yeah. I think I'm probably just going to go see Black Christmas tomorrow. I, I mean, I got to see I'm going to see Richard Jewell no matter what. Yeah. Um, like, I got to see it. I'm very curious. But I told you, man. I told you that. Yeah, don't get excited. Don't get excited about it. And, like, the the earlier reviews say that, it, one, it's not very good. Right. And, two, it's problematic. I can't believe. I, I can't believe myself that I didn't question. Um. Uh, Clint Eastwood Eastwood more. (laughs) I was like, I mean, it might be bad and weird and stuff, but whatever. Clint Eastwood's old. But like, I forgot about the like, remember the the, like Obama empty chair thing? Yeah. He's so weird. Dude, I'm telling you like, and like at this point in time, like I feel like it's sort of signed, sealed, delivered that like Clint Eastwood makes movies just so that he can be like slightly racist, slightly problematic and like do it in a way that like is not. Like it's it's right in your face, and somehow he's not getting canceled. Like it's tr- it feels like Clint Eastwood is actively trying to get canceled, yeah. and people are just like, "Well, it's Clint Eastwood." Yeah, I think that. So I'm very hesitant to the movie. I am going to see it probably tomorrow, but God, I hate that they that he just made up as much stuff as he did, and he didn't I think necessarily that- make make it up, but like he took. Liberty, uh, he, you, I, I, there's no way to like prove it one way or another, right? And, but like he took liberties in a place where like if you don't know for sure, right. you shouldn't do it, right? Like, especially I, when the person is dead and they cannot like come back and so like the the big right. the big scandal is that like it's not a spoiler because it's being reported everywhere. Like in the in the movie, the reporter uh, covering the the jewel yeah. case sleeps with a source to get information, yeah. and that person in real life. Has since died, yeah, and it was never proven that she slept with a source to right. to get information. Not even it, it was never even suggested. Really? I yeah. Oh, that. yeah. Okay. Nobody. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't like take some conjecture and put it in there. There was never anything that suggested that, and he just, <laughs> just made her. He just made made her the uh, what? What's the what's the the word? The femme fatale. Sure, it's all know. like the the seductive. Uh, woman who's the bad guy. Like, she'll do whatever it takes. Right. And so he made her that, and apparently he didn't do... He didn't check with anybody on anything. This ended up... This is just like... And again, we're doing the thing that we don't like to do, which is shit on a movie and say what's wrong with it when we haven't seen it. Uh, well, like, that's a thing that you can't you can't do, no matter what. Like, right, you, like the movies, movie could be really good. Right. You still shouldn't, like, just make that up about a dead person who can't respond... Right, and I think that that you could hear this and think, fellas, you're sounding pretty hypocritical. You got so mad at everybody else when they were saying, when they were shitting on Green Book when they hadn't seen it. Here's the distinction I'll make. Green Book was inspired by a true friendship, Mm -hmm. and this is based on a true story. Yeah. So one is, okay, this is going to be a light thing, and there's going to be a lot of liberties taken. If Queen had said that, I would have said, okay, make up whatever you want. Yeah. This, based on a true story, and it seems really to push the fake news thing, which oh, drives yeah. me crazy. It's a rant. It's it's pro- it's probably a rant. I, I haven't like seen a movie. It's a rant so of a movie. It's a, it's a rant. Yeah, it's Clint Eastwood making a rant through his movie about fake news and, and about shit like that. And like the, I think there's a distinction between Green Book, too, because like Green Book... While it might it might take like those liberties and those liberties might piss people off, yeah, and like the way that it stretches a story, it doesn't make anybody look like a like a horrible horrible person. At least like not in like the the two main characters, right? I would yeah, I would say that it paints. Uh, I, I if if I'm forgetting a scene in the movie or whatever, uh, apologies, but I don't think it paints Don Shirley in a bad light. No, at all. And if I mean, it clearly portrays him. As the adult, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And this one is like 
it's like shaming a, like a person and right. it's like it's it's saying possibly like the worst thing that you could say about like yeah. this person and their morals uh, like right. as like approach to their job and their life's work it's and a I, cheap it's it's just a, it's, it's a, a cheap very shot. cheap tactic it's, yeah it's a, a cheap shot and like, and, and you can say whatever you want to about like th- that person and how they did their job based off of like the actual story, and like because obviously that's what that's what the movie is about. Yeah, and like maybe that person wasn't uh, like wasn't the the biggest moral standard or whatever to begin sure. with. Maybe, but yeah. like, so use what you fucking have. Yeah. Use what's been proven. Use what is like not contestable. Rather than going to the the cheapest tactic and like the like a low blow that you absolutely cannot prove. Uh, I wanted something crazy. I read the entire demand letter that uh, the Atlanta Journal Constitution sent to Clint Eastwood. Really, it's like four pages long. <laughs> you read the entire thing? Yeah. Okay. It's like, yo, knock it off. You better say they said that they they demand that uh, Clint Eastwood release a statement saying that creative liberties were taken and that uh that i forget her name i'm always afraid that if i say i'm gonna google this name before i say it i'm always afraid that when i say a name wrong i say the name of somebody that like i know and then i'm just like randomly like throwing people out Kathy there. Scruggs I look I searched Kathy Scruggs I was oh, like is you? there like a Kathy Scruggs that I know or something but uh so Kathy they're like you, you got to note that Kathy Scruggs didn't do this that it was never suggested she did this and you've got to put it in a prominent place in the film so like at the beginning of the movie or something or at the like the beginning of the movie you got to say like Yo, you're about to watch some bullshit. Or at the <laughs> end, you have to say... Well, you're you're about bullshit. to watch some bullshit, and also here's a spoiler. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler. The, the sex scene that's <laughs> upcoming didn't happen. Um, Interesting uh, headlines on the, the Kathy Scruggs uh, Google. Olivia Wilde, who, by the way, plays Kathy Scruggs. Yeah. R- Olivia Wilde on Richard Jewell controversy. I do not believe Kathy Scruggs traded sex for tips from source. So I was reading something, and uh, I was reading... A, Whatever article had that whole demand letter in there, I think it's funny. Whenever they drop a like a legal document into an article, it's uh it's just a one page and you can click through it. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? it's a PDF. Yeah, they just drop a PDF yeah. in there. I like that. I wish they just did that with parts of articles. Which otherwise, they did with news. It makes it feel a little shorter. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, I only have like five more inches to read, but really, it's like thirty five pages. Uh, but in that piece, it was like Olivia Wilde who plays uh, Scruggs. And then like hyperlinked uh, has defended uh, the the movie's portrayal of her, and I didn't click the link, but I remember thinking as I was waiting to get to the demand letter, I was like, no, she didn't. I was like, there's no way Olivia Wilde was like, oh, she fucked that guy. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way she like she probably said whatever. Um, and I'm not. I, I know they're different movies, so I, I hate that I keep going back to Green Book, but mm-hmm. there it's the only other one recently where there was so much stuff about uh it it not lining up but uh mahershala ali was like i hope that we portrayed this guy right and i hope that his family is okay with it blah blah, blah. like n- he nobody's but he, he was still saying like i think we'd made a good movie and everything she there's no way that somebody would be like no, forget what their family told you. That's lies. I got it right. Uh, this is interesting, though, because like this adds like a whole new twist. Uh, Olivia Wilde said, Nothing in my research suggested she did so, and it was never my intention to suggest she had. That would be an, apolo- uh, an appalling and misogynistic dismissal of the difficult work, sh- work she did. Uh, it, uh, the perspective of the fictional dramatization of the story, as I understood it, was that Kathy and the FBI agent who leaked false information to her were in a pre-existing romantic relationship, not a transactional exchange of sex for information. Oh, so I don't even know that. That's what she... Oh, she that's, was told... That, oh. That's what she... like. That was her interpretation of the way the movie pre- pre- presented it. So that honestly uh. sounds to me like she's like she's making up... like. 
a, a reason to right. excuse her being in that movie Yikes. while also saying like this is appalling and misogynistic if it were to be said that must suck i mean that's a being, tough imagine position being to in be a, in. yeah being in a movie that everyone's like yep that was problematic and that was bad i'm sure you're the that all these actors are like Shoot, man, we're upstanding citizens. We didn't mean to do. I yeah, don't know, like I mean, that's really shitty. Like to to be in that position because like she doesn't have a fucking say. Like I guess she could right. not do the movie, but like she's looking for work. Yeah, she's doing work. Like I don't know. Like it's I don't a. No, I think she probably trusted that whoever was making the movie and had a store had the, like the right story and everything. And her mistake was trusting, trusting Clint, Clint Eastwood, Eastwood. Yeah, which yes. uh, I mean, guess to, I guess to Clint Eastwood's credit. I my biggest criticism of uh, the mule was that he took a very interesting story uh, and he and made it boring and then and, added multiple and, threes, threesome, threesomes. Yeah, threesomes? He, he added a sex scene in that one too. <laughs> I, so I heard that I saw a thing where Pete Davidson and uh, John Mulaney talk about the time they saw the mule together. Half of it was funny. You can guess. Okay, um, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> I take that back. That was a shot at Pete that Davidson. Was a, that was a low blow. Not Hot shot. Um, no, but the uh, the my biggest criticism of, of the mule was that he took an interesting story and made it boring. Uh, he at least this time he learned from his mistakes. He, he took an interesting story and tried to make it more interesting, but he did it in so in, in a very wrong he place. Did it in <laughs> what uh, Clint Eastwood thinks is interesting, he applied Clint Eastwood's interesting logic to it. Yeah, this. I wonder what our. We've already had a longer conversation about Richard Jewell without having seen it than I imagine we will once we actually do see it. Probably, yeah. We're just going to be like, yo, movie sucked, right? <laughs> yeah, word. Merry Christmas, Pete. Hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> what? <laughs> you said that last time. I think it's a good, it's like a seasonal thing. All right. Someone's angry with coffee cups. They say they've changed them too soon But all I hear is a choir Singing silver bells to you Forget complaining about Decorating we wouldn't do that around here Cause the holidays only come once a year Oh, the holidays only come once a year Oh, the holidays come once a year They only come once a year There'll be certificates of gifts and baskets of fruit the season of sharing for old and the youth That holiday spirit will never get long in the tooth A cinnamon cookie to munch with a friend When that son of a bitch Kringle has done it again It only comes once a year The holiday only come once a year Oh, the holidays come once a year They only come once a year pantry no more snacking you keep me plenty full my dear cause the holidays only come once
can't see Just every episode for the next month or so, just start off with Merry Christmas. Keep it going, maybe even a little past Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>